leading second baseman, who many say has become the best all-around player in the league. Well, what can you say about Robbie? Uh, Robbie's just an uh, all-around great player. Uh, not only as, as far as his offense early in the year, he picked us up uh, a lot of times, big hits, big two-out hits, uh, big win and run hits, uh, great plays, uh, loves to play the game. Day in, day out, he's given a, more than anybody else on the team. He, he makes uh, the tough plays, and uh, he gives 100% of his, his body, too. He's, he's, he never dogs it. Uh, he must have a real tough uh, mental approach to the game. He's real tough mentally, I guess, because he comes out there and he's there to play every day very hard. No one appreciates Alomar's contributions more than those who play with him day in and day out. He's getting better and better with age. And, uh, you know, being 24 years old and, uh, you know, already had four years up under your belt and, you know, three as an all-star, I mean, the guy's just going to get better and better. You say Roberto Alomar and you put three dots beside it, you know, for infinity. It just, he just keeps going on and on. Here's Alomar. That's why he's an all-star. Alomar goes out and just cranks this one. There goes Alomar. Takes it to second safely. Put three dots beside Joe Carter, and you get a player of unlimited talents, one who loves to play the game. But if anyone thought having fun and playing hard don't mix, consider Carter's 30 home runs and 100 RBIs, year in and year out. You want steady? You talk about Joe Carter. You want 100 RBIs? You want 25, 30 home runs? That's no easy task, year after year. Whether someone's hitting behind him or in front of him or not, he'll get it done. As the big three and four hitters in the lineup, Carter and Winfield see a little bit of one in the other. When I look at it, looked at him from a distance before I knew him that well, he reminded me, if I can say, a lot of me. I'm just his style on the field. We both played the same positions. We kind of reacted to the ball offensively or defensively in the same way. Now, I do see a lot of myself in him and the things that we do. We both try to go out there. We, we stay healthy. We keep ourselves in good shape. We go out there, we play the game hard, we have fun doing what we do. It's not like a job to us. It's like, you know, like little kids at Christmas time, you know, with some brand new toys. Every day we're out there, you know, the fun, the excitement, uh, trying to get the fans pumped up, trying to get our players pumped up, the teammates. Uh, we try to lead by example and not just by word of mouth. Make no mistake about it, in the case of Joe Carter, he leads the Blue Jays every which way. As great a year as Carter was having, he and the Blue Jays slumped after the All-Star break. On August 4th, they hit a real low when a muscle pull in Juan Guzman's back put him out of action for 15 days. The Blue Jays staggered through the month. On August 10th, their lead was down to two games, and the second-place Orioles were in town. Suddenly, pennant race was on everybody's mind. You see the Sky Dome. The Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays are about to have at it. The first series of the year that starts feeling like a pennant race is underway. With the pressure on, the Blue Jays went to the long ball. In game one, they got home runs from the usual power sources. Joe Carter, Candy Maldonado, and Dave Winfield. Each of them hit a two-run homer. And Todd Stottlemyre kept up his career hex on the Orioles, pitching seven strong innings and beating them for the sixth straight time. And so, Toronto is three up on the Orioles as they uh, clobbered the Orioles and uh, deflated the Orioles Express. And Toronto, by virtue of that, is one up in this series. But in the next two games, the Blue Jays got clobbered themselves, shut out in one and outscored in the other 11-4. And the lead was down to one game. Looking to regain their winning perspective in game four, Joe Carter cut loose for the third time in four days. His 26 homer put the Orioles behind early. What's more, they were positively stymied by Doug Linton, who was in the midst of a brilliant first major league start. 
Fastball is bounced up the middle. Roberto Alomar up with it. And Doug Linton has now retired 15 consecutive Oriole hitters. Linton allowed three hits in eight innings. Good enough to collect his first souvenir as a major leaguer and put the Blue Jays two games in front. Linton's debut turned out to be a bright spot in an otherwise bleak stretch for the pitchers who were going through a bad time. And as the pennant race wore on, the Blue Jays had reason to worry. But on August 27th, General Manager Pat Gillick gave the pitching staff just the lift it needed when he snagged one of the top pitchers in the National League, the Mets' David Cohn. Believe it or not, about two or three days before it happened, we were still on the bench. Um, I can't remember exactly where we were at, but I was talking with a few of the players, and I was saying the two best pitchers in the National League are the two best pitchers I thought had the best stuff in baseball, was one, Denny Martinez, and two, was David Cohn. And I didn't think anything else about it. And when I came to the ballpark, I came a little bit early that day, and uh, one of the guys down up on the tunnel said, uh, did I hear about the trade? I go, no, what trade? He said, uh, we just acquired David Cohn. And I went, who? I was like, no way. We just got David Cohn? They said, yeah, for Jeff Kent, play to be named later. And from that moment on, it's like I walked up the steps, and I, I didn't even remember touching the steps. You know, because I was just so excited to be talking about the guy two days before, and now all of a sudden he's on our ball club. In reality, this is an, an extremely excellent opportunity for me to be you know, here on a great team and a great organization, a city that's really hungry to win, and a team that has a good chance to win. And uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be here. It showed what the organization was made of. They're not afraid to go out there and spend some money uh, to get what they, what they needed. And right then, we needed a big boost. And uh, go out there and getting David Cohn just solidified the whole ball of wax for us. Cone spent his first night as a Blue Jay sitting in the dugout watching the team try to snap out of its slump. But there was nothing the Coneheads or anybody else could do against Robin Yount and the still pressing Milwaukee Brewers who were about to take on Jimmy Key. So all the uh, indications are in for a low scoring ball game tonight to get Jimmy Key. So uh, Jimmy is the key for the Blue Jays tonight and Cone may be the savior when he gets his first start tomorrow. But the Brewers had something entirely different in mind for this particular night, one the Blue Jays would just as soon forget. Base hit number 23, number 24, back with number 25. This is really painful, folks. 27 hits. Make it 28. That's the 29th hit. Make it 30 hits. That is the American League record. All time here tonight, 31 hits by one team in one game. 31 hits are the record the Jays would like to forget, but it'll stand forever. It was 22 to 2. It's in the books. You come back out tomorrow afternoon and see what David Cohn could do against the Milwaukee Brewers. But getting his feet wet as a Blue Jay was more like a drowning. Cohn walked seven and allowed seven stolen bases. Still, the game might have been an omen because it marked the last time the Blue Jays would lose twice in a row. By the time the Brewers left town, the Blue Jays' lead over Baltimore was down to a game and a half. The good news was that August was mercifully coming to a close. But August might have gone a lot worse were it not for Jack Morris's 5 and 1 record. Even in pennant race time, he's a man who never gets rattled. Pressure is something that I'm sure is out there somewhere, but I haven't really looked at it too much because I found out at an early age that in our profession, just like in any other profession in life, all you can do is give it your best. And you're the only one that really knows what that is. And whatever other people expect of you is irrelevant because you know in your own heart, in your own mind, that that was the best I had, win or lose. And it's easy for you to go to bed at night knowing that that was your best effort. He's the type of guy that goes out there and gives you innings. Uh, he never gives in to the hitters. Extremely aggressive. If there's a prototypical starting pitcher today that you'd want to pattern a young pitcher out of, it would be uh, follow Jack Morris. Winning makes the summer go by fast and you smile a lot. And uh, every time I'm on a, a quality team, a team that can win, uh, I tend to smile a lot more. It's, it's enjoyable. Nothing was more enjoyable than seeing Dave Winfield's clutch bat turn him into Mr. August. Here is the designated hitter, Dave Winfield. He has had a very good season. 
for these Toronto Blue Jays and has displayed that style and class of a winner.